This architect's office recently hired some new people. Helen is one of them. Like the others, she works full time, but with a difference. After 10 weeks, she goes back to college. Her school year is divided into three terms, class terms. The second, called the non-resident term, is spent away from college, working at a real job. Helen is one of 300 girls at Bennington, a woman's college in Vermont, founded in the belief that the student must learn to be responsible for her own education. elements of instruction at Bennington are basic, the sciences and the arts, the inherited culture of the past. But its method is different. Small classes permit personal attention to each student. Teachers guide education. They do not impose it. Everything at Bennington is based upon recognition of the student as an individual. No formal authority is exercised by the teacher. Rather, by his command of his subject, he captures the student's interest and encourages them to explore the subject. There is an easy exchange of ideas between student and teacher. And outside the classroom, the informal relationship continues. Campus blends with the countryside, but life on campus blends with the active world stretching out far beyond these hills. Bennington is more than an institution. It is a community in which all the members take part. They come from many backgrounds, from all parts of the United States, some from other countries. One third are on scholarship. Helen and Barbara are roommates. Both came to major in the visual arts. Helen is a third year student in architecture. Barbara, a new student, is 17 and wants to be a painter. Barbara considers her other classes secondary feeling that they detract from her absorbing interest, painting. At the moment, Bruegel's work fascinates her. She marvels at his technique. Bennington regards the performing arts as an important expression of modern culture. 
Helen, unlike Barbara, has interests beyond her major subject. Physics is another of Helen's studies. In addition to teaching, the 50 men and women of the faculty act as counselors. They help students clarify aims and find direction. All kinds of problems, directly and indirectly affecting the students' work, are discussed. student learns to work alone, to conceive projects, and to carry them out independently. Helen is in the final stage of a project, a plan for a community center. She has done library research and has visited several centers, and now is assembling the model of her project. Because it is her own independent work, no one tells her when her school day begins, nor when it ends. discipline of learning grows out of the demands of the subject. The duties of study are an obligation self-imposed. Helen has other obligations for which she must plan her time. Students share in the government of the college. Through a system of committees, they run their community affairs. They are also expected to evaluate teaching methods and may recommend changes in the curriculum. As in any healthy community, there is work and release from work. There is dressing up for social engagements.
Even at a student concert, Barbara doesn't really listen. She has one interest, and only one, her painting. In writing his report, her art teacher observes that her painting lacks vitality and breadth. Bennington builds up a cumulative record of each student, which provides an insight into her growth as a person, as well as a student. In Barbara's case, the college notes an attitude that it considers harmful for her development. With the record of her first term's work before them, the dean and her counselor discuss her work. Her papers in history and social science reveal only a superficial effort. When her counselor tells her that her work is below her real capacity, Barbara resents it. sharply against a fact about herself, that she had refused to think seriously about anything but her painting. Bennington is interested in developing the talents of its students, but it does not feel that the development of talent alone will prepare young women for life in a difficult world. Barbara's mind, the discussion with the counselor took on the form of an argument. Did he mean that she ought to give up valuable time from her painting to other work? It is not a question of time but of attitude that concerns the college. Like Barbara, Helen specializes too, but she relates her work to other fields of human activity. Barbara does not. Barbara's future was discussed by a faculty committee Willingness to assume personal responsibility. Capacity for independent work. The social outlook of the student. The range of her interests. These, not the mere completion of a list of courses, are the factors which determine readiness for advanced study. Pooling their knowledge of Barbara, her instructors and the dean arrived at the same point. That her outlook would limit her success as a painter and narrow her life after college. The counselor said he would try to help her see this. The counselor knew that people never really accept ideas against their will, especially young people. He tried to make Barbara see her other work, her history, mathematics, and social science courses, as so many windows through which she might look with a wider vision. Barbara didn't immediately react to what the counselor said. But she began to realize that Bruegel's skill came from an understanding of people, a concern for their everyday lives. She changed her mind about working in a museum during her non-resident term.
bed, she asked the director of the non-resident term to help her find a job where she might meet all kinds of people and get their points of view. The director places students with employers interested in new recruits. On their own initiative and through the college, the girls go out to jobs in hospitals, museums, offices, factories. And everybody has misgivings about a new job, no matter what it is. Since 1932, when Bennington was founded, its young women had gone out into the everyday world while still students. must eventually play her part. Barbara has a simple job, as copy girl in a newspaper office. But any job, even a simple one, has its lessons. The working world is schooling, but not school. It teaches, but more impatiently. For many girls, these jobs provide money which helps pay their way through school. The student gains practical experience of what the college teaches her. This is Bennington's widened out campus, where she is already making a start in life. times in four successive years, the students come back from their non-resident term enriched by their experiences. Ever since her return, Barbara seems more sure of herself, although not everything that confused her is answered. New concerns have entered her mind. The world seems bigger. She still concentrates on her painting, but she is bringing to it new elements from her experiences. Painting, biology, literature. It doesn't matter what the major interest may be. Bennington tries to make the student aware of a continuity. That the life out of which she has come, her college education, the life into which she will go after college, all make up a continuous process, a continuing education. This is the hope at Bennington, that these young women will gain knowledge, skill, understanding, and along with these, a sense of responsibility as citizens in a modern world. 